You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Now, in today's first house call of the weekend, we have some great questions that just came in over the past couple weeks. These are essentially from about just about a week and a half ago. So we're catching back up in questions, doing pretty well, I think, on that front. And as always, if you have your own question, you can feel free to submit it at stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. And again, please, no customer support questions there. We do not look at those questions on a daily basis. What we do is we round them up once a week when I go to do them for the weekend host call where we answer all of your questions, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging. For everything else, we're happy to answer your questions on a daily basis at support at stephencabral.com or support at drcabraldetox.com. So now that we have all these questions rounded up, let's get right into the show. And the first question is coming in from Carol. Carol's asking, hi, Dr. Cabral. You talk about the benefits of dry saunas, but our gym has a steam bath. Is steam as good as dry heat. Please explain the differences. Thank you for all you do, Carol. All right, Carol, what this is, this is actually coming up. You just kind of beat me to it. In about two weeks from now on our Total Wellness Tuesday show, we're going to be doing the benefits of steam versus sauna. And believe it or not, there are actually benefits to both, but they are different. So I didn't know this when I went to Sri Lanka and India to study Ayurvedic medicine. This is quite a while ago now. We learned the difference and we learned why some people like those with rheumatoid arthritis or joint-based pain, we call it, should not be using the wet sauna. And a lot of people know this kind of instinctively because their joints hurt more when it's about to rain or it is rainy, it's damp weather. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you all the differences between steam versus sauna in just a couple weeks. Tune in for that. Really great question. All right. Next up is from Sarah Lynn. Sarah Lynn is asking, I own an asphalt company and we burn through the sunscreen. Literally, I would love the recipe you talked about on this podcast. Okay. So I'm going to give you a recipe for a natural sunscreen right now. And again, tune back into previous Friday reviews because Friday reviews are where I give you all my top products. If you do not want to make your own sunscreen, that's okay. You can simply purchase a natural one because remember, most sunscreens on the market lead to cancer. Now, I know that's going to be hard to believe, but you have to tune into that show. They contain known chemical causing carcinogens known to cause cancer, literally. So you have to check out that show. It was on 511. So stephencabral.com episode 511. All right. So now here's the natural sunscreen that I did promise. It's very similar to Badger and a few other brands, but this one's going to add a couple, we'll call them superfoods or super antioxidants that you can put on your skin that actually have their own SPF. Now you have to check out too. If you go to instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. Now on my account, I actually give you a lot of the, I gave you the SPFs, the natural SPFs from nature that will help you to protect your skin from the sun as well for longer sun exposure. So check that out as well. I'll link it up in today's show notes. You can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 540 for today's show notes and links. Everything I talk about today will be linked up on episode 540 today. stephencabral.com forward slash 540. All right. So Here's the natural recipe. It is one half cup of olive oil, one fourth cup of coconut oil or cocoa butter. I like cocoa butter. It smells great. Gives a nice scent, I think, for a a natural sunscreen. Two tablespoons of shea butter, one fourth cup of beeswax, one teaspoon of raspberry seed oil, one teaspoon of carrot seed oil. Those are the two specialty products that I just talked about. Again, if you go to Instagram.com forward slash Stephen Cabral, you'll see that they actually have quite a high 
SPF of their own, which means those two things just rubbed on your skin will protect you from the sun as well, or the damaging effect of the sun. And so what I want you to do is mix together the olive oil, the coconut oil, the shea butter, or the the cocoa butter instead of the um, coconut oil, the beeswax, a little bit of the raspberry seed oil, and a little bit of the carrot seed oil, and you'll put them all into basically a Pyrex or glass mason jar. And then you're just going to get a saucepan, like a a pan that you would cook or boil water in. So put a couple inches of water in there. Just put it on a medium heat, medium, not high. And then what you do is you'll put all of your ingredients in a glass mason jar, and then you'll simply put that mason jar into the medium heat water, halfway up for that heat, and you'll allow the contents just to become soft. And once they become softened, once they become mixed, you can simply mix them up with a spoon. This is really, really simple stuff. And then after that, you're going to add two tablespoons of zinc oxide, the non-nano version, and uncoated if possible, of the zinc oxide. And that's a powder. So just make sure not to inhale the powder. You just take out two tablespoons of it. You put it right into your mixture after it's already uh, been mixed together. And take a spoon, just mix it all together, shake it up however you want to do it. And then you can simply... Simply put it into your own little squeeze tubes. That's really simple. You can buy squeeze tubes right online on Amazon. Why don't I see if I can even link that up in today's show notes as well? And there you have it. You have your own natural sunscreen that you can bring to the beach or wear, like Sarah Lynn said, with that asphalt company. Now, I do have to mention, again, you didn't ask for this, but of course, I can't not give you my advice. If you're working, or I don't know if you're the one out there working with the asphalt, but asphalt is a really toxic-based product, so I can't recommend enough doing something like the Dr. Ball Detox or doing... I know that you're already out in the heat, but another sauna to get that stuff out of your body. Really, really important for long-term overall health. All right, hopefully that helped. And again, I'll put that all in today's show notes as well. All right, Anonymous is up next. She or he writes in, hello, thank you for the hope you offer us through sharing of your knowledge. My question is regarding folliculitis. My husband battles this once or twice a year on his thighs. It typically happens when he works in hot weather, I'm assuming weather, wearing jeans. Is there an alternative to using a prescription to treat this? Thank you, Anonymous. Okay, Anonymous, let's get you the question, or I should say the answer you're looking for. So I dealt with folliculitis quite a long time ago, but it is a painful really a painful health issue. And if people don't know what folliculitis is, it's essentially an irritation or an aggravation of the hair follicles. And they get these like pustules where the hair follicle would grow out on your leg or on, I got some on literally like right underneath my rib cage. I had some on my legs, just like you're talking about with your husband, because I did quite a, a bit of research on this as well. The issue was I was using antibacterial soaps, so really important that your husband switches to a more natural soap, like a coconut or a shea butter-based soap, much, much better for rebalancing the actual pH on the skin. And it doesn't happen overnight, but he'll get less and less, and then he won't get it ever again, which I've never gotten again in at least a decade. And the other big part of it is this. It's the other... I had massive candida and and bacterial-based issues in my gut, so I had candida overgrowth, and I also had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, so SIBO. And I had to clear that up because we're really looking at, if you're looking at folliculitis, you're looking at a gut health-based issue with, there is some some anecdotal data, at least, that it could be anemia-based as well. Now, since anemia is not something that most guys have to deal with, it's possible, absolutely possible. But making sure that your husband just does Something like the daily nutritional support shake where he's getting all of his B vitamins and and those things that are very, very important. And he can get tested for iron or low iron, but of course, never give a man or male iron unless you test for it first because they can get iron overload. So here's what I would do. This is exactly what I would do. I would change out your soaps, make sure that they're natural-based products. That includes shampoos as well. All right, make sure there's none of those sulfates, any of those things in them, parabens, using natural-based products. Then I would either do the organic acids test to test for gut based issues such as candida overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, fungal overgrowth, or bacterial overgrowth. I would do that. And then if that comes up high, I would do the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol that we recommend. It's one of our most popular. People get amazing results. If you go in our cabralsupportgroup.com and you look, you'll just see amazing results from people on that. And and they're getting the results that they always wanted from SIBO, Crohn's, colitis, you name it. You know, it's, it's there, candida overgrowth. So 
And that's what I would do. Now, temporarily, you can use a little apple cider vinegar on the skin and on any of the follicles that have become inflamed. You can use a little colloidal silver on the skin as well. That will help. Now, internally, a lot of people get benefit, believe it or not, from turmeric. So you can use curcumin or turmeric. You can even juice it however you want to use it. But turmeric has been shown to help quite powerfully as a natural antibacterial, yes, for our staph bacteria and for uh, other bacteria that can cause folliculitis. So that can help tremendously as well. Organic acids test, candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol, add in a little turmeric if you would like. That is absolutely what I would recommend for you. Okay. Next up is Lauren. Lauren is asking, hi, thank you for everything you do. My family and I love to sit around and discuss what you've taught us. Thank you, Lauren. That's great. I just got back the results of my food sensitivity test and it says I need to avoid corn. I'm wondering if that includes popcorn. It's my favorite snack and I can't help but wonder if the fact that it is dried could alter the danger of it. Thank you for helping a fearful corn lover out. Okay, so unfortunately, Lauren... I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yes, it does include popcorn as well, without a doubt. Now, the reason is this, is that we're looking at the protein as the issue. So yes, when you pop it, it actually can become more digestible, more digestible potentially because you're, you know, knocking out some of those lectins. But what I would do is if you are, meaning if you do our food sensitivity test, there's four columns. There's a green, which is okay. If you're in the yellow, well, you're starting to become sensitive. That's about a six week elimination. We do six to 12 weeks. If you're in the light orange, well, that's a 12 week elimination. And then if you're in the dark orange, that's a six month elimination. Now, so here's the thing. You can start eating that corn again in about three to six months, depending on your sensitivity. And then I would just do it once a week, test out, see how does it feel. Then you can maybe go back to twice a week. So why is this important? This is important because you need to get yourself, Lauren, to what's called a new normal. You might be have a lot of inflammation, a lot of maybe even gut inflammation from eating the popcorn since you're sensitive to it and immune-based reactions. And if you eliminate that, you might actually start to feel a little lighter, meaning like in both mind and body, a little bit more energized, less brain fog, any of those things, but you have to eliminate it first. If you really love popcorn that much, at least eliminate it for six weeks and then try just having it once a week. Okay. Those are my recommendations. Hopefully that helps. Jen is up next. Jen is asking, Dr. Paul, I have two questions. Whenever I eat grains, I feel tired, bloated. My nose gets stuffed up and I sometimes get moody and I feel like it gets worse every time I try a little here and there. I've also had two root canals and recently all my old amalgam fillings removed except one small one. I feel like there is a lot of toxic buildup in my body as a result. Would you recommend a heavy metal and deep cell detox? I've heard you talk a little bit about removing toxins in the home as well. And I'm wondered if you have a list of brands that you trust in your home or natural homemade recommendations for replacing things like dish soap, laundry detergents, organic house cleaners, shampoos, conditioners, makeup, et cetera, with the safer products. Love your podcast. I'm so grateful for all you do. Thank you. Okay. So Jen, really simple. You can just go to stephencabal.com forward slash podcast. And on that page, just scroll down a couple, let's say like two scrolls down, you'll see a little search box. We just put this in a couple months ago and it allows you to search all of the different things you're looking for. So if you want to just type in shampoo, type in shampoo and see if anything pops up for my recommendations. I will tell you this, that in my new book that's coming up, I know it's always coming up, but it will be out one day, is that I will have a list of all the different shampoos I recommend, all the different uh, household cleaners, all of those all of those things. And I'm going to make it even easier because I'll put a tab right on stephencabral.com forward slash store. And on that tab, we'll have all of those recommendations. I won't be selling them, but I'll simply be linking up to all of the other great companies out there that do sell them because that's really what it's all all about, sharing the things that I do in my own life and in my practice with everyone so that we all get those benefits. So now let's get back to how do you detox your body? And the best thing you can do is this, really simple, really straightforward, a seven-day Dr. Ball detox. Then after that, I recommend a heavy metal detox and then finish it with another seven-day detox. If that's too much, simply do the Dr. Ball detox with the heavy metal detox. We'll link those up in the show notes, really simple, really straightforward. And then I would do as many as much as possible. I would do a sauna or infrared sauna. And I would really try to do that at least two to three times a week for three weeks or four weeks. That will help tremendously, really 
really, 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 it will. And the reason is there's research behind all of these things. So again, just if you go back to my heavy metal detox, you'll see that in just 42 days, and that's what we give you, 42 days, over 90% of all the mercury, the aluminum, the lead was pulled from people's body on a natural-based detox. What did that involve? Well, it involved cilantro. It involved crack cell chlorella. And we use a special biofilm disruptor as well. It's so simple to do. I'll link that up in the show notes. It works tremendously well. And of course, you can do a hair tissue mineral analysis, Jen, if you'd like to see if your metals are a little higher as well. And then of course, the Dr. Ball Detox, why do you need to do that? Well, the Dr. Ball Detox is really a liver-based detox, which means that when you're doing the Dr. Ball Detox, it helps to get the blood that's circulating through the liver and all your blood circulates through your liver to clean it to a better degree because you're giving it more phase one and phase two nutrients. So those are the antioxidants that your body needs and also the sulfur-based amino acids that your body needs. Now, what else could you do after that? I would follow up, again, my personal opinion after you're done with this, uh, or I should say on a daily basis after the Dr. Ball Detox is the Dr. Ball Daily Protocol. What is that? Simply the daily nutritional support smoothie in the morning. You can add in one scoop of the one tablespoon of the daily fruit and vegetable blend or just do that separately like I do. And then the daily probiotic support. That gives you everything that you need, literally all the vitamins, all the nutrients that that your body needs in that shake. It's also a protein powder. And then you get your greens, which is going to be a natural chelator of heavy metals on a daily basis. And then you get the 50 billion CFU for the good bacteria in your gut and it's dairy free. So Jen, that is everything I would do. Play that back if it was a little too fast or a little too much and uh, you'll get all of your answers right in there. Okay. Jody is up next. Jody's asking, you recommended two different toothpaste, Jason's and Lucky's. Do you have a preference? Okay. So this is what I do. And again, I'll always give you exactly what I do. I use the Jason's fluoride free gel for the toothpaste on a daily basis. And I use the Lucky's mouthwash on a daily basis. Uh, I shouldn't say a daily basis, but as needed. Those are my two favorite, without a doubt. Now, I use the Lucky Toothpaste. I did use that for about six weeks, and that's a really nice one for helping to whiten the teeth naturally. It has charcoal in it, so it literally turns your teeth black for just temporarily until you wash it off, and then it helps with whitening. It's a very, very great toothpaste as well. Now, why don't I use that on a daily basis? Only because I have a white sink, and it was turning my sink black as I would spit it out of my mouth, and I didn't want to clean that up every single day. There, I'm sure there are other ways you could spit into your toilet, do whatever you want, I guess. You know, this is what works for me. I, I'm honestly, my routine, I, I like to keep things very simple, like When I do dry brushing, it takes like three minutes. All these things are just very, very simple. You know, for oils on my skin or for a natural moisturizer, I typically just use an argan oil. For soap, I just have a coconut or shea butter soap or a hemp oil soap. I don't use a lot. Like I really... I don't have a big regimen, we'll put it that way. But for me, the Lucky's toothpaste is, I should say, the Lucky's mouthwash is what I would recommend, and the Jason's is what I recommend. And we'll link those up in today's show notes. I'll link up exactly what I use myself. All right, last question of the day from Stacy. I'm a 45-year-old, 135-pound, 5'8 female. I don't know where to start. I have symptoms for histamine intolerance, MTHFR, and leaky gut. I do feel like my stints doing GAPS has helped my histamine tolerance to some degree. I've been paleo and gluten-free for four plus years. I tend to stay quite low carb and high fat, really going over 60 carbs a day. I eat all organic grass-fed meats and fats. Most days I do intermittent fasting. I'm an ectomorph and have been doing CrossFit for four plus years. I tend to be more strict on calories and carbs when I can't do CrossFit due to injury, which is my current situation. I'm an excessive all or nothing high stress person. I do drink wine. I go through phases where I will have several glasses a night and coffee, try to quit the caffeine. For the last few years, I have battled ligament after ligament injury. I have torn both ACLs, one just a month ago, Achilles, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, and current tendonitis on both elbows. I'm quite sure I have drastically deficient minerals, specifically magnesium. I'm wondering what hormone issues I have as I did three years of in vitro IVF and fertility treatments, failed, ended up adopting, long story, what tests and protocols do you suggest and in what order? What do you suggest I do with diet? Thank you for amazing podcast. Just found out and I'm hooked. Okay, so I'm going to do the best I can. And honestly, this is going to be really simple and really straightforward. You are just doing exactly what an ectomorph shouldn't do. 
That's the truth. You're not going to hear this anywhere else. But when you do hear it a couple of years from now, you'll know that you heard it here first. That's the truth. A keto-based or just low-carb diet for an ectomorph is the exact opposite of what they should be doing. Exact opposite. Exact opposite. Literally. This, like, this infuriates me because we're doing all for one and it's just not the truth. Okay, here's the deal. When you're an ectomorph, you are naturally, genetically supposed to run on more glucose. It doesn't mean eat sugar, but it certainly means eat carbs and healthy carbs, fruits, vegetables, and some grains if they work for you. Now, if grains don't work at all, then that's okay, but you can still do your fruit and your veggies, and you can do sweet potatoes, and you can do yams, and you can do all of those things. And a high fat diet for an ectomorph does not work, neither does a high protein protein diet because their digestive system is a little bit more sluggish. And the reason it's more sluggish is because all the blood is pulled more to the body. Like you said, you're stressed. They run higher stress. So they can't digest. They can't break down all of these foods to the best of their ability. And when you give caffeine, it also exacerbates that ectomorph-based tendency, the higher stress, the higher anxiety. And what happens? They become more catabolic. And Stacey, what happened to you? You became more catabolic had difficulty with pregnancy, and that's totally normal as well in this high stress-based environment because you ran high cortisol. It lowered your progesterone levels. You also started to break down muscle tissue, shin splints, tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, Achilles-based issues, tore your ACLs. You're doing CrossFit, which is exactly what you should not do as an ectomorph. It's too high intensity, too hard on your body. I could go on and on. I really honestly could. You're just not living in tune with the ectomorph morph based body. So what does that mean? Strength training, yes, two to three times a week, not crushing yourself with like a CrossFit based workout. Again, I apologize, CrossFit, but you know, it's the truth that I have to call a spade a spade. If you're young, you're healthy, you get enough rest, you eat well, you're more of a endomorph, maybe mesomorph based body type, then CrossFit can work fine for you. I'm not saying that. But for an ectomorph, too crushing, too hard, too catabolic, too high stress, too fight or flight, too sympathetic nervous system dominant. It's just the truth. It is, it is what it is. You know, I'm just literally giving you the truth. That's the way it is. I hold no stock in anything, right? So that's what you have to do. You have to get back to more of Hatha yoga, some body weight training. Yes, you can do some cardio. Yes, not to excess, not to where you're breaking your body down. You need to re- think your diet plan as well. I can't go through all of that right now, Stacy. I apologize, but I'm giving you the, the system, the, the protocol to follow, which means a more carbs in your diet, a little less protein, a little less fat, but you still keep it balanced for your body. And of course, the, um, the caffeine is going to exacerbate that. And let's you know try to cut down on the wine to maybe once a week or twice a week. You can still enjoy it, but not go overboard. You added a part two to your question. And that was, forgot to also mention that joints always hurt in low energy throughout the day. Yes, again, that's the ectomorph. That's the inflammation you caused by the lifestyle that you're living. Remember, carbohydrates cut cortisol. People are thinking right now that protein cuts cortisol, fat cuts cortisol. It doesn't. Only carbohydrates cut cortisol. Again, this is physiologic. Like, so when health experts are talking about high fat, all this, like, that's not normal. And it's honestly not. The last part is also my daughter adopted at two and a half from China, who's almost eight, has asthma and a merit of skin issues. Most skin issues are better since gluten-free, but still has athlete's foot, sweaty hands, and asthma. What do you recommend for her? Thank you. Okay. Straightforward for your daughter. Here's what I would recommend. An organic acids test. Simple urine-based test that you send into the lab. We get the results. I read the results for you. Our health coach takes you through a plan for her. Here's my thing. Even if you're not going to do that, you're going to want to look at some type of fungal based infection. The sweaty hands, the athlete's foot, the asthma, we're looking at some type of inflammatory based issue. You said remove, you went gluten-free. That's going to help because you're reducing the fructans. Fructans are a FODMAP type food. They're higher, again, fructan food, which feeds fungus. It feeds bacteria in the gut. That's what I'd recommend. If not, I would simply go with our children's based candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. Hopefully that helps. And uh, that should do it for today. Thank you everyone for tuning into another Cabral House Call. I appreciate each and every one of your listens. And as always, for all the show notes and all the links from today's show, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash 540. Take care, everyone. And I'll speak with you tomorrow on another Cabral House Call. 
I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.